Bees are an important part of our lives. They help pollinate to produce most of our food, and without them, many of the organisms on Earth, including us, would starve. However, the honeybee's habitat is being reduced to the extensive grazing of cattle and sheep. Due to many reasons like this, the bee population is declining about 40% every year, and if this keeps up, the effects will be detrimental to the planet. To understand how to help the declining bee population, we must also understand how beekeepers are able to care for bees. The first step in learning about caring for bees and beekeeping is to understand their required habitat when caring for them in bee boxes. Here are the bee boxes where they are currently living in right now. However, the season is winter, so it's too cold for the bees to go outside of the box. Instead, they all huddle around inside and vibrate, which, gen which generates enough heat for them to keep warm during the winter. These bee boxes are placed with a built structure around them, which is mostly used for design, but can help to shelter the bees. Beekeepers usually recommend putting the bee boxes in a place where trees or some structure will break the wind and provide shade. Make sure there is a shallow but dependable water source nearby, like this one. Bees need a varied diet, so different flowers from so different flowers must be planted. Plants must be planted that bloom at different times of the year, so bees have food at all times. In this particular bee habitat, some of the flowers that are planted here for the bees are purple cone flowers, black eyed susans, cow parsnips, and woodland sunflowers. But there are much more kinds of flowers that can and are used to provide bees with the resources they need. This is what the habitat looks like for the bees during the summer when the flowers are bloomed. Now let's take a look at the bee boxes. They usually have two parts. This the bottom box is called the brood box, or in this diagram, the deep super. It is the bottom box is where the queen lives. It can also hold up to 80,000 worker bees, which are female bees. The top box is called a super. It is where bees create the honey that beekeepers harvest. There's a selective barrier that looks like a grill between the two parts of the box that prevents the bigger bees, like the queen, from moving from the brood box or the deep super, but it does not prevent the movement of smaller bees, such as worker bees. This barrier is called a queen excluder. We do not want the queen bee to go into the top box because it would lay eggs there, and when the larvae hatch from the eggs, they would eat the honey, and we, but we want to take the honey from the top box. A bee's habitat is not the only part of a bee's life we must recognize when caring for them. Understanding bees and their social structures will help us to better understand how to care and help for bees. But before we get into the specifics of bee society, there are a couple of traits that all bees share. The memory of bees is one of these things. Their memory is outstanding so that bees are able to remember where the hive is and where possible food sources are in order to keep honey production efficient. In all bees, communication is controlled by pheromones and dancing, in which pheromones activate a response from other bees, and dancing is used to tell other bees where food sources are in terms of the hive. In these pictures, the bees are in a certain position to emit pheromones better from their underbody. These, these pictures show, show bees dancing to communicate with each other. This is another video showing dance the bees use to communicate. society. Bees are grouped into three different groups, the queen, the drones, which are, met, which are the males, and the workers, which are the females. These are pictures of drone bees. The drone's only purpose is to fertilize the queen. They depend on worker bees for food, however it is essential for them to be present for the survival of the colony. In Michigan, they live from April to November so that the hive doesn't have to worry about feeding the drones in the winter during the colony's hibernation. Due to different temperatures in different places, the colony's hibernation time frame can vary from place to place. 
Bees are a picture of, of worker bees. Worker bees are the bees that do everything besides the reproduction needed to maintain the colony. They do all the work, including collecting food, guarding the hive, and nest building, and etc. The worker bee has some special features that make her ideal for specific hive duties like scent glands, pollen baskets, brood food glands, and wax glands. There are two kinds of worker bees, winter worker bees and summer worker bees. Winter worker bees have a special genetic makeup that has extra fat stores to allow them to survive for longer periods of time. Winter worker bees will be able to survive for the entire hibernation period, so they will last from April in Michigan. So they will last until April in Michigan. Summer worker bees are bred when hibernation is not occurring, so from April to September in Michigan. However, their lifespan is about five weeks. These are pictures of the queen honeybee. The queen bee is the only fertile female, so her main job is reproduction. The peak egg-laying season, egg -laying season is spring and early summer. During this time, the queen can lay up to 1,500 eggs every day. She will gradually cease laying eggs near hibernation and eventually produce little to no eggs during hibernation until next spring. The queen is capable of producing up to a million eggs in a lifetime equivalent to 250,000 eggs per year. Here are all of the different kinds of honeybees in society compared in size. This is the worker bee, the queen bee, and the drone bee. When you care for bees, you must be aware of all the time and effort it takes to properly care for them. Based on where you live, the procedures for beekeeping could vary based on the temperature and climate. The general way of caring for bees stays the same, however, while the details may differ. In this video, I'll be going over the procedures for beekeeping based on the average climate and temperature in Michigan. Depending on the season, the procedures for caring for bees are different. In the summer, you should check on the hive about every 7 to 10 days, but not anything more than that, so you don't disturb the hive too much. During your periodic visits, you will have two tasks. Your main task will be to collect the excess honey in which you can use for your own purposes. Honey is ruined from the combs in various methods. Some people squish the some people squish the comb and let gravity pull the honey into a container like this. Another method method uses a tool called an extractor to pull the honey from the bee box frames. This process is shown here. The other part of the summer procedures is to conduct varroa mite sampling. Varroa mites are parasites that attack and feed on honeybees in the colonies. They look like this. To keep your bees safe, you must make sure that your hive is not infected with varroa mites, and if it is, you must take the right measures to help your hive recover. In the fall, you have to transition your hive to be ready for the winter. In Michigan, colonies usually start to transition themselves mid-August through September. This is when they start to raise winter work bees that are better genetically equipped to survive the whole lifespan of winter. This picture shows this picture shows a winter worker bee, which is genetically different from a summer worker bee. As the bees begin the transition, you as a beekeeper just have to make sure that the bees are free from all diseases, pests, and etc. The hive has and make sure that the hive has ample stored honey to make it through the winter. If the bees need extra food or don't have enough ample honey, simple sugar water should be provided. In the winter, the bees will all huddle together inside the bee box and vibrate, which keeps the whole colony warm throughout the winter. The cluster looks like this. When the bees form this cluster, the beekeeper shouldn't open the hive to check on them so you don't disturb them. However, you still have to make sure the bee colony stays healthy throughout the winter. Every time there is a sunny day in winter, you should go to observe your hive and to make sure it is healthy. If a hive is healthy in the winter, a few bees will be seen leaving and returning to the hive to take bathroom breaks. In the spring, bees will transition themselves from winter to spring. In the spring, the bees will be transitioning themselves from winter to spring and summer, usually from March to April in Michigan. They will start up foraging for food themselves and raise summer work bees. To make sure your hive will transition well, you need to make sure your hive has enough stored honey to last them until the plants start the bloom. In the late spring, after the colony has already transitioned, you will need to make sure that there is enough room in the bee box for the incoming nectar and honey, and to also monitor your bees for, the for diseases. 
Whenever you check up on your hive, you have to know to determine if your hive is healthy. Whenever you check up on your hive, you have to know how to how to determine if your hive is healthy, even if you aren't looking for anything specific, like for mites. This usually comes with experience, but beginners can use this expert recommended guide to help them determine if their bee colony has a disease and what to do if their colony doesn't have it. Fully committing to taking care of bees takes lots of time, energy, and effort, so if you aren't really passionate about beekeeping, it would be best to hold off from fully committing to it. However, even if you don't want to take on the responsibility of caring for a colony of bees, there are other ways you can help the bee population that doesn't require too much time, energy, or effort. The first way you can help bees is to avoid using too much pesticides, insecticides, and herbicides in your garden or property. These chemicals in your pesticides, insecticides, and herbicides can harm bees if the bees pick them up from a flower in your garden. Another way you can help is to make a bee drinking bowl. Bees get very tired when th while searching for nectar, so creating a place where bees can rest and regenerate will help them be able to collect more nectar, resulting in more honey being made in the hive. To make a bee drinking bowl, fill a shallow bowl with water and provide a resting spot for bees to land, to land on by filling the water with pebbles and stones. Last but not least, the most effective way you can help is to plant a bee garden. This means use plants that produce a lot of nectar. Some examples of plants like this are the buckwheat or phacelia. Planting a bee garden also means planting a large diversity of flowers that blooms at different times of the year so bees ha have a food source whenever they need it. Bees actually collect most of their nectar from trees that blossom in the spring, so make sure to, to plant shade trees that produce shade trees that produce a lot of nectar like basswoods, linden, maples, or willows. Or just make sure to take care of your already existing trees. There are so many ways you can help bees, so even if you aren't able to do anything big to help the bees, that's okay. Just make sure you're helping in some way. Even a little help goes a long way. Bees make it possible for so much life to exist in the world. There's no reason why we shouldn't be helping them recover from their struggling population decline.